A dolmen sits hidden in plain view at the edge of a stream. Evidence that ancient people once thrived here. The prehistoric site signals to the future that this rich and fertile valley would endure and attract others. To farm. To build. To dream. In winter, the narrow stream swells into a wide tributary forming a broad pond, a ton. Its forest is fed from the Loire River, flooding pastures with nutrients, creating a rich and vital habitat. Nearby, there are more stones. Inside these halls, the expansive, raw beauty of the Aton returns. In the 1920s, Claudine Huffer Genou painted the walls of the Petit Salon with her interpretation of sky, water, land. Gerard and Claudine moved to Chateau de Pin in 1922 to raise their family in a glorious setting, a setting that they had a creative hand in. The Genoux had been a French-American family for generations. A notable figure in our genealogical line is Marie-Francois Regis Genoux, a renowned Hudson River School landscape painter. Born in Lyon, France in 1814, Regis studied in Paris with De La Roche and Vernet. He emigrated to America in 1840 and married Elizabeth Christmas. They established a home and a family in Brooklyn, New York. Regis traveled extensively in the U.S. and France and beyond to paint and exhibit his landscapes. He died in Paris in 1882. To glance back is to see that Regis Genou's passion and artistic pursuits has trickled down through the subsequent generations. Love of wooded scenes and vast romantic vistas are all a part of the painter's vocabulary. It is also the vocabulary of Le Pen. Gerard was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1887. He grew up on Minamere Farm in Great Neck. Gerard graduated from Harvard University and studied landscape design at Cornell. Claudine was born in Montmorency, France in 1890. Claudine studied painting in Paris. Her love of horses and hounds is evidenced in the many sketches and paintings on view at Le Pen. They were first cousins raised in different countries and both direct descendants of Regis Genou, our painter. In 1916, Gerard joined the American Field Service as an ambulance driver and aide to the French Army, serving in two units. When the U.S. entered the war in 1917, Gerard enlisted as a private in the French Foreign Legion. It was during World War I that Claudine and Gerard reconnected, he having been injured and taken to hospital, where Claudine was serving as a World War I nurse. She oversaw a ward with 150 beds. Claudine's scrapbook carries some of the memories of those years.
Gerard and Claudine were married on July 18, 1918, in Dinard, France. After the war, they moved to Great Neck, New York, where Gerard and his sister Elise managed the family estate, Minimir Farm. There, Claudine and Gerard had their first two children, Annette and then Claude. They returned to France and had Jack and Fontainebleau. Regis and Elise were born at Chateau de Pin. The children grew up in a period of exciting renewal. Every aspect of the estate, house, gardens, and farms were being refreshed, reimagined. Horses, ponies, dogs were all a part of their lively household. The children were educated at home and looked after by a succession of British governesses. In August 1931, tragedy struck. Claudine and her newborn died, leaving the entire household swollen with sorrow. Resolved to provide academic structure for the children, Gerard hired a recent Harvard graduate, Frederick Buck, who joined the household and became a beloved tutor for the children. The tower rooms off the Grand Salon served as library and classroom. Mr. Buck's letters home circa 1932 include this observation regarding the Genou children. Besides having a stiff school course from me, they take care of hens, chickens, turkeys, dogs, horses, make butter and sell it. The boys cultivate their own flour and vegetable beds. The Genoux do not believe in idleness. On April 25, 1935, Gerard and Elizabeth Perry were married at the American Cathedral in Paris. Betty came to know the family as a governess for the children. Having completed her degree at Vassar in 1932, Betty was living abroad and immersed in her interests in ancient art and architecture. Looking to extend her time in Europe, she answered an ad for a governess needed at Le Pen. In the mid-1930s, Gerard sent the children to the U.S. to complete their education in New England boarding schools. Gerard and Betty resumed residence in New York. During the 1940s, they had five more children, Adele, Jeanne, Charlotte, Noel, and Perry. Betty, Gerard, and their young family came to Le Pen for a two-year residency, 1951 to 53. The children were tutored at home and free to roam the estate, making up games in the barnyards, participating in vendange, enjoying rustic French food, and getting to know French cousins and the close-knit farming community. Le Pen has been home to the Genoux family for 100 years. Only 16 of these years did Gerard and his family live there. The chateau has relied on dear friends, neighbors, farmers, and cousins to endure. And it continues to host lively iterations of grandchildren and great-grandchildren who find their way to Chantessay.
the Genoese acquired Le Pain, they put together two working farms to create a 350-acre estate that produced grain, livestock, and dairy. These were farmed by two arms of the Chereau family for over 60 years. Le Pain's dairy cows produced award-winning milk and butter. In 1932, young Jacques Genou observes in his school essay, Next to the cow stables is a silo. There is a machine to fill up the silo. And our tractor turns the corn cutter, and all the corn goes in a great big pipe. We go in the silo to squash down the corn. Most of the farming was done with powerful Percheron horses. The plowing, the harrowing, and the pulling of carts. As agricultural laws and customs became more progressive, the practice of sharecropping ceased. Today, Lupin's fields and pastures are leased to local farmers who practice crop rotation. Alongside his plans to run a robust farming operation, Gerard set out to become a winemaker. In 1923, Gerard hired Clément Souzeneau as farm manager and as vigneron. They established vineyards that produced Chenin Blanc and Coulet de Marichaux and Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon in Vignoble Plaisance. Over time, the expanded winemaking operation occupied the old stone stables adjacent to the chateau. Gerard and Clément were to enjoy a 40-year-long friendship. They had some success importing the wine to U.S. markets in the 1930s. In 1939, Clément was interned into an agricultural labor camp by the Nazis. Gerard assures the Susano family that his salary will be paid during his absence. Lupin's farm suffered during this grim period. French farmhands were forced off the land and into German work camps. The women and children were left to manage under German occupation. A decade later, renewal greets Le Pen's agricultural community. Gerard supplies new mechanized equipment and tractors for vineyards and fields. Chateau de Pain wine is accepted into Appellation Anjou Controle. Rene Collette, born on the estate in 1929, apprenticed with Susano and was vigneron from 1962 to 1988. René and his wife, Marie-Louise, raised their family in the Vintner's Cottage. Bondage was a community effort that involved neighboring farms and farmers. The harvest occurred between late September to mid-October. Pickers worked in pairs, harvesting in tandem across a row. Rita Chenu helped steer the future of Le Pain after Gerard's death in 1966. His deep connection with the vineyards of his childhood remained strong. Regis invited family and friends from the U.S. and Canada to join him for Vendange, hosting annual house parties from 1975 to 1999. Grapes went into oak vats, seeds, stems, and all. The red grapes soaked in their skins for a month to allow the color to come forward in the pressing. The fermented slurry was pumped into a 50-gallon barrel where it sat for months in a second fermentation. White grapes were pressed almost immediately. Starting in 2000, Chateau de Pain vineyards have been leased out to Domaine Delaunay, who maintain the vines and all aspects of wine production, bottling, 
and sales. Sand and stone were among the first ingredients Gerard procured as he set out to establish the gardens at Le Pin. He worked with noted architect Alfred Kerner to develop a series of slate terraces with reflecting pools. The pools hold water channeled from the immense slate roofs of the chateau. The original front door that once received carriages became the entrance to a dramatic topiary garden. The top terrace above the Tilbury Garden offers a spectacular collection of exotic citrus fruits and shrubs. Just off this terrace, Le Pen's lingerie shelters these specimens in winter. Gerard's gardenscape invites a visitor through interlocking paths to discover the Grand Bassin. The Tea Rose Garden the Trois-Bassin. Jeanne de La Salle's entrepreneurial vision for Le Pen is extraordinary. Like her grandparents, Gerard and Claudine, Jeanne has an expansive capacity for visual expression. She has been the driving force for garden restoration and innovation for over 40 years. Extensive garden restoration began in 1990. Damaged stone walls, terraces and steps were rebuilt and expanded. Equipment and labor was secured through Jeanne's broad network of garden friends and experts. Nineteen ninety also marks the year that Chateau de Pin Garden Association was formed, and with it, a talented group of volunteers and horticultural students joined Jeanne in her efforts to realize world-class gardens. Renaissance. The Fête des Plantes, established by Jeanne in 1987, supplied vital income for garden renovation. This included annual gifts of plant specimens from regional growers. Le Pen's restored flower beds again host interesting varietals. The biannual garden festival brings in thousands of visitors each spring and fall. A marvelous community connects, expands, and flourishes. A tireless innovator Jeanne coaxed the garden to encircle all sides of the chateau. Roses, oleanders, and hydrangea adorn the old stables and line the border to the Petit Park. Over the years, Le Pen's potager has had periods of productivity and of silence. In the 1990s, Jeanne made it home to the roses, with broad lawns and pathways of blooms. She cultivates a teaching garden showcasing classic and ancient herb specimens. In 2019, 
Terry Blanchot, Jardinier, began leasing out the acreage to grow biodynamic fruits and vegetables. These are sold to local grocers, farm-to-table restaurants, and farmer's markets. Le Pen's guests also enjoy baskets of his seasonal produce. nearest village, Chantessay, which means Fields of Caesar, holds ancient ruins and the tracings of Roman roads. Archaeological evidence indicates that Le Pen's central square tower was erected on the remains of a fortified Roman village of the 12th century. In 1780, a new wing was added by its then proprietor, Monsieur de la Faucherie. The expansion included two square towers linked by the Allongerie. In the mid-1840s, the house underwent extensive architectural ornamentation in the neo-Gothic style to become a classic French chateau under the direction of Comtesse de la Haye. The elaborate stonework includes gargoyles, filigreed mansard windows, and bestiarie fantastique. The De La Haye coat of arms is embedded into the stonework of the chateau and chapel. The nine-pointed crown indicates the rank of count. on the chateau, they updated the house with electricity, new plumbing, a coal-burning furnace, windows, roofs, refreshed salons, and bedrooms. Over the decades, renovations, large and small, continue. French-American family, the Genoux possess a long history of inviting family and friends to visit this patch of France. The light-filled chateau, with its broad apron of lawn and garden, has hosted a range of celebrations. Le Pen is also well-suited to welcoming more casual moments. Friends reunite, explore, play. 
Food, inspired by recipes of the region, is enjoyed inside and out. In 2006, Henry, Wendy, and Hannah Janu took a 14-month residency at Le Pain. They renovated the gardener's cottage, broadened guest services, and established the resident manager position. This expansion coincided with a variety of art workshops and residencies being offered at Le Pain each summer and fall. Barns and attics, cottages, salons and lawns have all served as pop-up studios for drawing and painting, textiles, book arts, cooking, writing, music. We are a do-it-yourself family with an old house to love and preserve. Join us.